After weeks of only takeout and delivery permitted, restaurants across the state could start opening for outdoor dining as early as next Monday, if we don't see a spike in coronavirus cases before then. The move will come with a long list of safety precautions, including six feet between tables, with a maximum of six people each, disinfecting between every party, staggered staffing, single-use or hands-free menus, and face coverings for all staff and customers when they're not at their table. So, can it work? Yesterday, I put that question to two of the biggest names in the local restaurant industry. I'm joined now by Christopher Myers. He's co-owner of Myers & Chang and Flower Bakeries. His partner, Joanne Chang, was recognized as America's best baker by the James Beard Foundation a couple of years ago. And Douglas Williams, he's chef and owner of Mita, who was recently named by Food & Wine as one of its 10 best new chefs. Christopher, great to talk to you. And Douglas, great to meet you. Thanks for being here, gentlemen. Christopher, uh, uh, if all things go well in the next few days, Next Monday, Charlie Baker will allow restaurants like yours to have outdoor dining. Are you ready? Are you going to take advantage of that or no? Um, we haven't decided. Um, and we have a very small um, footprint at Myers & Chang. We have far more options available at Flower. We will absolutely take advantage of it um, with the Flower locations. Um, it is a, it's a, it's a welcome reprieve. It's something. Um, and in no way am I pointing a finger at the mayor or anyone else. I mean, the governor or anybody else. It's not enough, um, but it's something. Is it something, Douglas, or what is it? It's something, uh, and we're going to, you know, as, as I've learned from Christopher, as he was one of my first mentors, um, you know, we are going to do our best oh. and just take, take, what we, take what we have and, um, and you know, Obviously, have give improvements and give opinions where we can, and but we have to. If the customers and, and our guests are coming in, then hopefully we can take them in as safely um, along the guidelines that we've been provided. Can I attempt to do a Jim Browdy translation of what you've both said? That you sound like upbeat people who love what you do and are not at all thrilled by next week's partial opening. Is that a fair summary of what I just heard, Douglas? Starting with you. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's kind of like we, we uh, and nothing against city pools, but it's kind of like we have to swim in the city pool. And we, I get hit by a little turd and, you know, a little thing comes this way. And we, we don't want to be there, but it, we know we have the beach, but we have to swim in there for the summer. And that's what we have to suck it up as. And, and it's not the most, it's not what we, what we wake up and jump out of bed to do, but um, that's that's the reality. Christopher, do you want to continue the turd imagery or no? <laughs> Um, I, I think that, um, th one, I don't want to speak for anybody, but, um, myself and Joanne and our two projects, um, it, it, you know, I, in no way. And Doug, Doug feels the same way. Every restaurant is personal and special and is hanging on white knuckling their way through this pandemic. And, um, so many aren't going to make it. Um, is, is there some optimism in being able to open up for, um, for outdoor alfresco dining in the summer in Boston? Yeah, a little. Um, but if you're not making some inroads, um, with, with curbside delivery and all that, nobody has enough outdoor dining to survive during all this. So, so you, you have to really put all the pieces together, um, to, to sort of like literally just hang on by the by the skin of your teeth. By the way, the guy for whatever it's worth, pre, prior to the pandemic, the guy who runs the Restaurant Association from Massachusetts has said fewer than a quarter of the restaurants in the state had any outdoor dining to begin with. So a lot of recreation's got to happen. Douglas, if you were the czar of this thing and you could just dictate what changes had to happen that would keep your customers and your staff safe, but also allow you to make money. What would you do? Give you the whole sidewalk, close a lane on the street. What would get you from here to there in a reasonable sort of fashion? Oh, it's a, um, none of it is a good thought to be, be having. Um, retail is one thing. I mean, we're doing it. I mean, we're, we're, this isn't a, there is, Closing the closing the the streets may do something. They're doing in New Hampshire. They're doing you know we do it on Newbury what two times a year. Um, 
uh, for certain events. And yeah. we could, yeah, we could do that, but it's, we just have to piece it along. Some people just aren't, some, some businesses can physically not make it uh, or financially not make it. Um, and it's already, you know, we're running on a, what, 2% uh, margin right now. And we're usually running on a eight to eight to twelve percent margin and it's just you can't it makes it and that's if you're lucky that's if you're like well we're already doing well um and had no had no kind of things blocking you so uh, i don't we're doing we're doing all the things that we possibly can there is no magic unless we're sending food international and 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 doing all some magic trick there's really not a whole lot unless christopher has some uh wizardry which i know he always does well, Doug, if you had, uh, um, I mean, Jim, if you had uh, uh, some other operators on, and I can think of a, a, a few people, they are um, ready to open up at 100%. Um, they are um, brazen and daring and courageous, and they think the governor's wrong, and they think we're waiting too long, and um, they think we're doing permanent damage not only to their businesses but to our economy. And I'm not saying in any way that they're wrong. I'm not. Um, right now, um, that's not what's uh, availed to us by um, the the uh, governance that we have right now. So we're fo we're following the law. We're doing what the adults are telling us to do, and um, hopefully, the next steps will fall in line fast enough that fewer people will fail because many many businesses will fail. Part of what I know, at least I get out of Myers and Chang and out of Mita is not just fabulous food, but there's a certain feel. Can you mm. recreate that feel, starting with you, Christopher, with the kinds of restrictions that are going to probably be with you for ages? Um, can I recreate it? No. Um, I've been doing this a long time. Can I recreate something different? Yeah. Can I do what, what Myers and Chang is? Can, can we do at Flower what Flower is, which is so much an expression of of who Joanne is and how she bakes and, and her affection for mm. the city, her staff, confections. Um, when you are um, greeting somebody with, you know, a plexiglass screen in front of you, yeah, we can do something. Can we do the same thing? Absolutely not. Um, can we do something as effective or as much an essential part of, of the sort of mise en scene of, of Boston? We can try. But we don't know yet, we, but we can try. You know, Douglas, somewhere on your website, it says something about handshakes and hugs. That's not going to be happening for a while. So can you, are you envisioning a different kind of media that satisfies your needs, your workers' needs and your customers' needs? Do you, do you see that in your head? Um, yeah, I, the foot touches and the and the awkward elbow bumps just, just aren't <laughs> going to cut. And we're going to have to figure out um yeah. some ways to get to get close emotionally um to our to our to our guests and you know again we're in the process of figuring all those things out and in talks of what goes in line with the guidelines again you know christopher is right about we're listening to to our parents of, of what is what is the you know what's comfortable and because you have to be under the guidelines of the least per the least comfortable person and that's how you kind of have to go about and, and dictate your, your dining room. Um, but we're, we're trying our best. It's part of you're not in this industry if you don't have some part of you that wants to connect on a really visceral, personal, emotional. And, and we all say this, but it's just like people in the theater. You're not good at it unless you can make that connection. That's what we all try and do. If you've been to me, you get it. When Doug's there, man, that, that, that is just, it's, it's a special, special place. Um, people come into Flower. Um, you know, people come into Flower. They look around for Joe because it's a, I mean, she fills that place with something special. We do this because it's in our DNA. Um, right now, we're going to do it in full-size body condoms. And, you know, it's, it's not going to feel twice. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have a turd reference and a full-size body condom reference. Before you guys go, Christopher, starting with you, can you see far enough in the future where the new normal ever becomes the old normal or no? Um, well, uh, I, I, I want to I awkwardly segue into uh, what's going on in the world and what's going on with 
with, you know, the, the, the recent murder of George Floyd. And um, the, I don't think there's, there's any room for anything close to what our normal is right now. Um, we, we just have to we have to move this world forward and segue in, in, in as many different directions as we can to create change. Um, and um, nothing's going to be normal until we face the just the ridiculous lack of 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 um, um, financial equality in our country. Um, I know you you always have some, like that book in the, the people's libraries in the background. Here's mine. Here's where's 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 my here's my here's my library. It's ton of easy codes. Um, between the world and me, I know your your viewership has this book, but but every white person out there read this damn book. And if you don't cry five times in the first 10 pages, you don't understand that. There's one thing I want to t- talk about what happened last night. If you're more angry about the rioting and the, and the, and the, and the destruction and all that, than you are about that man's murder, then you really uh, are part of the problem. And there's so much in this, in our country, that's part of this racial problem that, um, we need to talk about it and talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. And I didn't answer your question, but I'm on here with Doug and he has so much That's more to fine. say about so, tonight. And so cut me off, Doug, you say something. No, I'm going to cut you off and say, Douglas, this is one of the first interviews I've done where every single answer is better than any of the questions I asked. So I'm not even going to answer, ask a question. You just get the final word. Take it away. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you know, Jim and, and Chris, what's, what's the first thing you would do? If you were on a desert island and no one is around and you had to be saved and you feel helpless and your, you know, your life is probably in imminent danger and a plane was passing over, what, what was the thing you would do? I don't know. That was, that was, uh, yeah. You would light, you would light a fire. That's the, that's the, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. Because you're not seen. Okay. You don't, you're, you're, you are in danger. And that is, a, that is the most human reaction to not being seen and not being heard and in danger and all these things. And that is, that is what you do. And granted, this is not a, I'm not condoning what's happening, you know. but this is, yeah. a, this is a cry. This is, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a literal cry um, to, to I help. I don't know if it's uh, Malcolm the or MLK said, writing is the, is the language of the unheard. And yeah. I don't condone it either. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make any sense no. at all. It doesn't improve anything, but it's understandable. No. Gentlemen, on that note, Douglas, Christopher, thank you both for your time. And I wish you a lot of luck in the very near future. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Doug, awesome being on here with you. Jim, thank you very much. Hugs and handshakes soon.